you headlines. Minister of Finance lays estimates and supplementary budget. Police says no overnight murder in five keys. And groundbreaking ceremony for sports complex and shelter for Grand Turk. Hello Turks and Caicos, welcome to Newswatch. I'm Latoya walking your anchor for Wednesday's newscast. The real news starts now. The government is seeking budgetary support in the amount of $7.7 .7 million for the country's coffers to better carry out its functions. Here's the Minister of Finance in Wednesday's leading story. Presenting the first supplementary appropriations bill for the financial year 2021 to 2022 was the Honorable Erwin J. Saunders, Deputy Premier and Minister of Finance. This is Saunders' first time moving a bill in the House as Minister of Finance since taking up the post in August. He explains the reason why the government believes the country can afford to plug more money into government expenditure for this financial year. This first supplementary appropriations bill for fiscal year 2021-2022. In this bill, Mr. Speaker, you will see that the Almighty God has bestowed many blessings on our great country with its beauties grand. I use the words blessings, Mr. Speaker, as this supplementary budget has been made possible due to the unprecedented fiscal performance of the country since our government came into office. Within these supplementary estimates and based on our near-term forecast, we are proposing to increase revenues from 274 million to 363 million dollars. That's an increase. Mr. Speaker, that's an increase of approximately 90 million dollars or 32.5 percent over the approved budget estimates with stamp duties on land transactions at 35 million, import and customs duties at 22 million, and accommodation tax at 16 million being the primary drivers of the increased revenues. And Mr. Speaker, I am happy to report that the real estate and tourism sectors are currently experiencing month-on-month -month growth that's exceeding pre-COVID levels. Due to this better than expected performance, I'm also happy to report that there's no longer a need for this good, good government to draw down on the loan facility to support recurring expenditures. Now that's cost for persons who, are, uh, who don't have an accounting background. The minister says it is because of this strong performance his government is looking to increase his spending. Our government is proposing to increase expenditure by $346,443, which is approximately a 1% increase over the current budget. In addition, In addition, our government is reallocating seven million, seven hundred, well, seven point seven million, across ministries to facilitate major government government priorities and process improvements. Of this amount, three point four million was savings achieved in personal emoluments for the first half, that is the period from April to September. The new priorities include land acquisition to support the tourism and education sectors, seed funding to support the implementation of the credit union ordinance, funding to support the partial credit guarantee fund, increased allocation for special needs children in the school voucher program, funding to continuously monitor the public-private uh, partnership contract between TCIG and Intel Canada, and additional funding to allow TCIG to add into contracts to advance priority items, including citizen security, education, health care, and other social services. The revised estimates of expenditure for the financial year, which is referred to as a supplementary appropriations bill, is now with the Appropriations Committee, which will review the contents of the bill for later debate in the whole House. For PTV News Watch, I'm Delana Isles. 
Following several training initiatives with multiple departments, Ministry of Education, Labor, Employment and Customer Services has announced the launch of its subsidiary offices in the family islands. On October 14th, in collaboration with the established Immigration Department offices on South Caicos, North and Middle Caicos, the Customer Service Department commenced extending services to individuals who wish to make applications to the following departments. Labor and Employment Services Department, Registration and Citizenship Department, as well as the Immigration Department. Commenting on the initiative, Emilio Seymour, manager of the Customer Service Department, stated, quote, It is indeed a valuable initiative that brings a much-needed service to the family islands in our pursuit of a holistic approach to customer service within the public service. It is important that we continue to foster inclusion in the interests of residents and visitors alike. End quote. The Minister with Responsibilities for Customer Services, Honorable Rachel Taylor, commanded, quote, my team is proactive and seeks to deliver on their objectives set forth. The concern has always been to ensure that our people in the family islands are given priority as it relates to the submission of their documents through customer services. I applaud Emilio and Jakim, who with the team sought the need to partner with the Immigration Department for the utilization of their offices and human resources in an effort to aid in delivering for the people. The synergy that exists between the two ministries will continue to yield partnership initiatives. End quote. The department says that this initiative aims to provide an ease of doing business as it eliminates the need for applicants to travel outside their resident islands to submit the acquired basic applications and documents for the department. We'll take a quick break. More news watch when we return. Reminder that all PTV service accounts are due on the first day of each month. Accounts should be brought up to date by the 28th of the month to avoid disruption in service. Payments may be made on our office at Stubbs Diamond Plaza Providenciales, Midis Plaza North Caicos, and Airport Road in South Caicos. Payments may also be made online using Scotia Bank, CIBC First Caribbean Bank, and Royal Bank of Canada. Please allow three business day for online payments to be processed. We thank you for your cooperation. Welcome back to News Watch. Authorities have released a statement following false reports of the murder of a Five Keys businessman on Tuesday. The man emerged sometime later to assure all that he was safe at home. Video footage and voice notes led to some unwarranted panic across Provo Tuesday evening when news began to spread that a Five Keys businessman, Rico Rambo Roll, had been shot seven times and killed. However, the news, as police would later confirm, was fake. In fact, while persons were frantically placing calls and scurrying down to Roll's business establishment at the end of Five Keys, he was at home, safe and sound. It was only almost an hour later when this video of the supposed victim was released on social media, showing him reiterating that he had indeed confirmed his safety over social media, hoping to bring an end to all the confusion. Yes, I did. Oh. I sent it on the boat chat, I sent it on PDM chat, I sent it on... Yeah, Sheena. but that boy, night's video just happened while it dark in the wow. police there. Police later released an advisory that the murder was indeed baseless, confirming that no one had been shot or murdered in Provo on Tuesday. 
neither were shots fired. Acting Commissioner Kendall Grant also used the opportunity to remind the public to use their discretion and verify the source of such reports before posting and sharing to avoid confusion and public panic. Meanwhile, Rule says he has no idea where the notion would have arrived from, but will continue to practice caution and safety and hopes that the public will too. He is grateful to all who made calls or drove by to ensure his safety. The government broke ground to commence the construction of the first ever sports complex that will also serve as a hurricane center in the nation's capital. Take a look. The construction of the much-needed facility in Grand Turk has been in the works for some time now. And with today's saw turning, that work to construct the facility is now fully in progress. The complex is being constructed at the old education department grounds in the nation's capital and upon its completion will be utilized by the youths of the island and during times of hurricane. Over the years, the residents of Grand Turk have been anticipating infrastructure and support economic development. Hence, this project is truly an anticipation of my government's commitment to enhancing the lives of citizens in the Turks and Caicos Islands and providing a much needed economic boost to the island of Grand Turk. The project we are here to celebrate today is more than just a groundbreaking ceremony. We see it in the broader context as an important part of a greater effort to connect our communities through strategic infrastructure investment as a major step in stimulating next level economic development on Grand Turk. Today, I want to pause and publicly thank those various departments for joining efforts with the Department of Sports. Minister Taylor, under whose ministry the facility will be managed, gave an overview of what the complex is intended to achieve. The Grand Turk Sports and Shelter Complex will provide the necessary hurricane shelter during the hurricane season season accommodating some 50 individuals but my god we pray that you will continue to change the minds of storms turning them away from our shores mm -hmm. it is the intention of my government to continually focus on providing the necessary infrastructure and programs so it's, a, it's good to have infrastructure but ensure that we have programs that will mitigate the youth violence and act as a safe space for our youth Upon the completion of this project by Jamalco, our Grand Tech native boy, we will be one giant step closer to fulfilling our development potential. I, for one, am looking forward to seeing the nation's capital thrive and prosper in the years ahead. So congratulations once again. And Jamalco, stay on target. Former Premier the Honorable Charlene Carter Robinson, under whose administration the project was first pitched, commended the government for keeping the project alive and taking it to fruition. On her official Facebook page, the former premier notes that following the storms of 2017, Carnival Corporation approached the PDM government about using funds from United Way to assist those hit by Hurricanes Irma and Maria. She states that immediately a purpose-built shelter came to mind with sporting facilities and that a visit to the old education office sealed the deal in her mind. She says, quote, Thanks to the new government for keeping the project. Thanks to Carnival and United Way, and thank you to those who, over the three years, finally got this project here. Took too long, but grateful. End quote. Premier Washington Mizik, who also delivered brief remarks, acknowledged that achieving these important goals has to be done together. What this whole program tells us is that this whole idea, the reason why we're here today, uh, tells us that um, ideas can be born anywhere, from anyone, mm -hmm. right? And, and so, but we have to achieve them together. Yes. And I'm here to tell you today that my government's strategic focus is on human capital development. Mm -hmm. That is the umbrella, that is the, the umbrella uh, focus. Our subordinate goal, if you like, is human capital development. And this is a critical part of the construct, right? To develop the minds of our young people, to develop the physical uh, stamina, 
As Nick has said earlier and someone has said, sports is all about building character, about building um, teamwork. And of course, uh, the development of our human capital, uh, as critical as it is, it's also critically important that we put measures in place to protect people during uh, um, st storms and other external uh, episodes. For PTV News Watch, I'm Delana Isles. A quick break now, your weather forecast when we return. This is a reminder that all PTV service accounts are due on the first day of each month. Accounts should be brought up to date by the 28th of the month to avoid disruption in service. Payments may be made on our office at Stubbs Diamond Plaza Providenciales, Midis Plaza North Caicos, and Airport Road in South Caicos. Payments may also be made online using Scotiabank, CIBC First Caribbean Bank, and Royal Bank of Canada. Please allow three business days for online payments to be processed. We thank you for your cooperation. Mixed weather patterns across the Turks and Caicos Islands say she weather forecast for October 28, 2021. Starting in Grand Turk on Thursday, intervals of clouds and sunshine, high 85, low 80, winds south-southwest at 5 to 10 miles per hour. South Caicos on Thursday, partly cloudy skies, high 85, low 80, winds southwest at 5 to 10 miles per hour. North and Middle Caicos on Thursday, sunshine and mixed clouds, high 85, low 78, winds southwest at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Parrot and Pine Key on Thursday, partly cloudy skies, high 85, low 79, winds southwest at 5 to 10 miles per hour. And on Providenciales on Thursday, partly cloudy skies, high 85, low 79, winds southwest at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Time now for your sunrise and sunset. Sunrise at 6.51 a.m., sunset at 6.16 p.m. If we are high tides and low tides, high tides 1.23 a.m., 1.45 p.m. For your low tides, 7.17 a.m., 8.19 p.m. Time now for your hurricane outlook. For the North Atlantic Caribbean Sea in the Gulf of Mexico, a deep non-tropical low pressure system with storm force winds is centered about 100 miles south of Cape Cod, Massachusetts. The extra tropical low is expected to meander off of the mid-Atlantic and northeastern U.S. coast today, bringing rain and wind impacts to portions of those areas. Thereafter, the low is expected to move eastward away from the United States and it could acquire some subtropical characteristics while it moves eastward or southeastward over the warmer waters of the central Atlantic through this weekend. And that's it for your weather forecast and hurricane outlook. We'll be right back with more News Watch. Here at People's Television, we're more than just your leading news and entertainment services. We are spreading the gospel. We are breaking barriers. We are preserving the culture. Each one, teach one. We are committed to excellence. We're creating change. We are creating memories. We are the future! I am PTV. I am PTV. I am PTV. I am PTV. We are PTV. We are PTV! We are continuing the legacy. We are PTV. So many interesting stories have emerged this week, but here's another one that made this edition of Newswatch. I know a lot of people are anxious to know what is happening with land, particularly residential land. Uh, people are anxious because they want to be able to get access to Crown land, their land, to be able to build their homes and uh, without having to stick get somebody stick their hands in a garbage bag and take out a, take a number. We've done a lot of work on that. Things are progressing nicely. 
Um, there's always, there's already been agreement that that system is unworkable. Uh, and we're in the process to have a comprehensive plan for reforming that. Uh, as we speak at the moment, a term of, terms of reference are being developed for the appointment of two consultants, one by the Turks and Caicos Islands government and the other one by the SCDO to fine tune the work that has already been done but also to take a holistic view, a very practical view, as to how Crown land is to be handled in the future. Premier Mizik also explained that a housing department has been set up and it is his government's plan to build communities. Uh, what I can tell you also, that uh, we're working on parallel lines or streams to preempt uh, and to be able to get a, a quick jump on the way forward through the Ministry of Physical Planning uh, and infrastructure. Uh, we have set up a housing department within that ministry uh, and they, we had a meeting yesterday. The housing department that is making tremendous strides. Our plan is to do, to build communities. Uh, our, we said clearly in our manifesto that we are not about giving people a piece of dirt. Without roads, without water, without electricity, uh, and without cable, right? we are here to build communities and we are going to require some of us to change our cultural outlook. It was also noted to achieve such an ambitious stride, all stakeholders will need to play a critical role. I want to be able to deliver keys to people, right? a complete community rather than a piece of dirt. And that is going to require uh, partnership with the private sector and with uh, potential homeowners and with financial institutions uh, to make sure and that uh, we all come together and provide housing, um, a combination of which will be socials, some will be ownership, and some, but everyone in the country, and I said over and over, who has a legal right to be here deserves adequate housing. It can't be a five-star destination unless that happens. Well, that wraps it up for today's newscast. Join us again tomorrow and every weekday at 6.30 p.m. for The Real News. Miss the story? You can join us at www.ptvatci.com. I'm Latoya Walken signing out. Until next time.